Christian Rebellion was put on a government terrorist watch list and then taken off again after a little light outrage, I thought I would revisit the time after Extinction Rebellion was put on a government terrorist watch list and then taken off again after a little light outrage, I thought I would revisit the time last summer when they took over a part of central London and had a very noticeable effect on the area that you had to be there to experience. Also in this week's podcast, massaging cats, Pink Floyd brainworms, superglue, floating yodas, and how to win £100 in one very hard lesson. And the Extinction Rebellion uh, protesters are in the news, uh, well, they're all over the news, like white on rice. And they got onto the roof of uh, an evil broadcasting corporation's main office today and tried to shut them down after it interviewed a former police officer who thinks the detectives should uh, treat the, the extinction people as extremists. Damn you, free speech! On the fifth day of protests by the climate activists in central London... I came past um, Trafalgar Square, London's uh, fashionable Trafalgar Square... And, of course, the floating Yodas, they don't uh, do business at night. Why? If, if you want to use your Waffen Squirter 9000s to hose somebody off the street, how about starting with the floating Yodas? <coughs> there was something in uh, Trafalgar Square the other day where people were paying money to um, hang off a bar for two minutes. It was the actual wagering out in the uh, general public. Hang off a bar for two minutes... Uh, and you'll win a hundred quid, well, it, which sounds like a good deal, except you had to give them ten pounds to take part in the first place. What? I'm not making this up. Ten pounds, and they were doing a brisk business because it looks like a piece of cake, doesn't it? All you got to do is hang off a bar for two minutes. You don't have to move. You don't have to do pull-ups or anything, uh, you know, of great exertion like that. Just hang off a bar for two minutes. Who couldn't do that? Answer: Everyone. I hung around for uh, about 10 minutes or so just to see um, the looks on the faces of the people who were straining to win 100 quid. And every single one of them lost. So this is a warning to you. Warning! Warning! Don't be uh, taken in by that uh, uh, apparently easy task. It's virtually impossible, I would think. I mean, some fit people were trying it. I mean, they must have thought, uh, you know, I'm uh, virtually an Olympic athlete. That looks easy to me. It isn't. But how is that legal, by the way? Right in front of um, Her Majesty's National Gallery, if you please. So the floating Yodas, they need to get gone, and the um, the, the betting for um, hanging people need to uh, get gone, and the people who chalk out flags on the street for money they need to get gone and the people that um set up a disco an actual disco people r ride up with a pa system and um is national gallery and they are competing of course with the three or four rock bands that have set up and are um doing dreadful covers of pink floyd records rock and roll Oh, I saw, um, uh, did any, anybody see the, uh, the the filmic event, Us and Them, Roger Waters? Groovy. Ah, oh, that was fantastic. It was one of these things that you see at the cinema. It's, uh, it was a concert, but it was, I don't know when it took place, actually. Um, I'm assuming that it was live at one point. I may not, not have seen the actual live, the thing. But I made a big mistake, huge, because it said 7 o'clock, start, and so I assumed that, because it was a concert, it would start at 7 o'clock. No! I sat through half an hour of adverts at the cinema. It was excruciating. I haven't seen an advert in a while. I don't really go to the cinema at all. And on the very seldom occasions when, uh, you know, something comes out that is cinematic, like uh, the new Star Wars movie, for instance... <laughs> I will, um, I will roll up seconds before it starts, having checked with the person on the ticket desk to see when it actually starts, because I don't want to see the uh, adverts, and I particularly don't want to see the previews of the films that I haven't seen yet. But I showed up at 7 o'clock, and the film didn't start till 7.30. 30 minutes of adverts! Ah, Almost all of which were for television, and which was really surprising. I must have seen at least four adverts for competing TV services. I've never seen that before. 
Of course, you can't do that on television, um, I would uh, imagine. You can't show the advert for a competing TV service on TV. That's why I've never seen it before. Oh, they are desperate to get your eyeballs on their sets. But um, oh, it was um, it was just beyond brilliant, uh, was uh, Roger Waters. So angry. Hey, calm down, Rog. It might never happen. Oh, no, that's right. It already has. And... I'm, I'm going to go out and buy it when it come, uh, when it uh, undoubtedly comes out on video because it, it was just so great. You know, you don't think of Pink Floyd as being very angry. Back. Well, I don't. I think of them as being, um, you know, sort of uh, ethereal and uh, glacial with those uh, fantastic guitar solos Yowza. and all of that. But um, it's really angry stuff. I mean, Roger Waters, never seen such an angry multimillionaire. Furious he was. Excellent band. The best... Uh, I'm going to break into French now. Oh, no. The best coup de théâtre I've ever seen. A theatrical coup. Not cow. Coup. The best theatrical coup I have ever... I won't tell you, because you might want to um, see it yourself. It was... Uh, my jaw was on the floor. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I've seen a lot of Pink Floyd shows. You know, in person. And I have been um, amazed, like levitating off my seat with amazement. Oh. But I ain't never seen nothing like that before. Anyway, that was Roger Waters as and them. Sounded like an advert, uh, didn't it? Yes. Yeah, a little bit like an advert. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the end of the world. It would be a, a good uh, housekeeping to wipe up some of these uh, texts and messages and so on. And most of them are uh, cat related. This says cats massage with their claws because they would do that as kittens to, to, to their mother's teats to express milk. <coughs> oh. Gary tweets, that contented cat behavior is called kneading. It's a throwback to kittenhood when kittens knead their mother's nipples to encourage milk flow. Disgusting. I, <laughs> I knew it was coming. It still made me laugh. This says a cat massage is called kneading. They do it to mark our uh, cat related. This says cats massage with their claws because they would do that as kittens to, to, to their mother's teats to express milk. <coughs> oh. Gary tweets, that contented cat behavior is called kneading. It's a throwback to kittenhood when kittens knead their mother's nipples to encourage milk flow. Disgusting. I, <laughs> I knew it was coming. It still made me laugh. This says a cat massage is called kneading. They do it to mark... To mask, perhaps, the terrible... To, well, I'll read it as it's written. They do it to mark the terrible of where they're going to rest by putting their scent on you. That's not what they're doing. Um, and also on an animal-related uh, uh, tip... God, I hate that phrase. I can't believe it just came out of my mouth. This says, Africa's sausage flies are actually ants. In fact, these monstrous insects are males of the common Dorelus driver ants. They fly at night to gain a chance to mate with a queen from another colony. This is, this is, this is turn, taking a disgusting turn, this show. And Russell tweets, is the new podcast still being thwarted? <laughs> it's being... Um, uh, you're talking about the, the one with uh, me and Carol. Hey, me and Carol McGiffin are doing a podcast. Oh, right, yeah. It's actually coming out in a couple of weeks. Oh, right, yeah. And um, I think you'll find it amusing. It's called... Uh, well, it's absolutely pointless, me telling you what it's called. Because you can't get it yet. But uh, it's not being thwarted so much as held up. Time is uh, ticking on, and uh, none of us get any younger. Ticking away the moments that make up a dull day. Frittering and wasting the hours in an offhand way. Uh, North Devon. Hello, Richard. Blimey, Charlie. That was quick. Yes. Can I put you on hold? <laughs> oh, you have put me on hold. No, I can put you on hold if you want to regroup. If you want to collect no, your, no, no. if you want to collect your thought. No, no, no. I just, I, to be completely honest with you, I just thought it was going to take a bit longer. Right. Well, I can make it take a bit longer. Well, all right. <laughs> I mean, talking of time, and then one day you find ten years have got behind you. No one told you when to run. Dun -dun -dun. You missed the starting gun. 
I've been singing that for uh, days. I wake up with that rattling around my brain. Well, it's better than uh, chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep. Seriously, if that, when that comes out, you must rush out and buy it. Us and them, Roger Waters. Absolutely fantastic. Ca- Canterbury. Hello, Chris. Nick. Chris. How you doing, son? All right? I am super. Thanks for asking. Great. I want to tell you, you are at the top of your game. You are just brilliant. Anyway. Well, thanks, Chris. from all that, yeah, I wanted to tell you, you were speaking the other week about um, one of the best concerts you've ever seen is Kid Creole, yeah? In 1982, Aylesbury Friars, Kid Creole and the Coconuts. It was just, it was an almost religious experience. Nick, let me tell you, same year, 1982, when I was 18 years old, Mm -hmm. I used to go to um, um, Capital Radio, used to have what they call the best disco in town at the Lyceum Ballroom in the Strand, right? Mm -hmm. And they had Guests every week, they had Odyssey and all this kind of thing. <clears throat> and this week, they had Kid Creole and the Coconuts, right? There was about 30, 30 of artists on stage. Yeah, it was packed he, stage, yeah. He rocked the house, right? There was 3,000 3, people of us. You can actually smoke and drink on the dance floor. <laughs> it was the most brilliant experience I've Ever, ever right. had. And, of course, the smoke you drink, the play you get. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for the update, Chris. It was a little... Uh, it was uh, wandering back in time. So we're, we're more or less the same age. And uh, we'll never forget, unless we do. Write it down, Chris. Put it on video. Neil tweets, The robot is now on desk duty pending an investigation. What does, what does that mean? I think that was one from last week. Oh, is it? <laughs> All oh, right, uh, we've done last week's, and we're we're moving forward now. Uh, see, this this time theme is uh, just just keeps on uh, keeps on rolling. Tired of laying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. You are young, and life is long, and there is time to kill today. And etc. I could sit here all night doing that, but I won't. Uh, I won't do because I, I want to do the Extinction Rebellion people, not do them. But, you know, so it's the fifth day of protests in central London. A group of demonstrators climbed onto a canopy roof and prevented journalists from entering a building at the top of Regent Street. The police made six arrests. Others super glued themselves to the front doors. Is that wise? I mean, doesn't it hurt when you get peeled off? I'm surprised that some of them have got skin left on their palms. How do you get somebody off that has super glued themselves? apart from yanking them off, along with um, their dermis. Can I recommend chains? I mean, I'm not suggesting that you use them, but as an alternative, wouldn't that be better? Chains, more comfortable than glue. I mean, they do the same job, surely. What's with all the glue? Climate activists get through more glue than a teenager's party. Yowza. And they were angry that uh, former Scotland Yard counterterrorism commander Richard was uh, given airtime on uh, another radio. Can you believe that there's another radio station? No. Well, apparently there is. Uh, He previously wrote a report saying that uh, the Extinction Rebellion people should be treated as anarchist extremists by the police and recommended that officers adopt a proactive approach to stopping the group's illegal tactics. Well, maybe. Maybe that's exactly what they are doing because so far, this week alone, 1,100 activists have been arrested after they protested in Trafalgar Square and Whitehall and uh, government departments and city airport and here, there and everywhere, baby, just shy of the total arrested during the whole of April. You know, I can remember when they put that pink boat in um, Oxford Circus. You remember the pink boat? I didn't know it was there, and I I was going to um, another place to have uh, some uh, refreshment. Booze. And... (laughs) Uh, I, I had no idea that they were there, but it was just around Oxford Circus that I was uh, going to be drinking. Uh, but, and I always avoid Oxford Circus and Oxford Street in general because it's just the most hideous road. It's just really, really awful. Why, why people all over the world want to go to Oxford Street? I've got no idea. Are you out of your minds? Uh, but, and so I took the back route for Wigmore Street. And I came out um, about sort of three, four o'clock. And I thought, gosh, it's quiet. 
I mean, Wigmore Street is generally relatively quiet, uh, a road. It's a very wide road, and it r- runs parallel to Oxford Street, but a, about a block up. Um, and I thought, but it's very particularly, um, especially quiet today. And I walked along and along and uh, came down towards uh, Oxford to Circus to get the tube there. And I, th- I thought, where's all the traffic? This is great. People are just wandering around the middle of the road. And then the uh, eventually I heard the... The, the whistles and the shouts and the drums and all that. And I thought, oh, that's right. It's the pink boat people. <coughs> they had given London back to people rather than it, London being uh, built for the express purpose of facilitating driving. And the centre of London was the, was the best. It was the most relaxed. It was the most pleasant I've ever known it. So I appreciate it, uh, you uh, pink boat people. Thank you. It shows us the way. The whole of the centre of London should be pedestrianised with a small window, let's say between 8 and 10 in the morning. Amsterdam does this. Between 8 and 10 in the morning, something like that, uh, all the tiny, windy little streets in Amsterdam are taken over by delivery vans. And you can't drive through it, you've got to drive around. If Amsterdam can do it, then why can't we? You know, what with their uh, whole thing going on. Want to score some pot? If they can concentrate long enough to do it, then we should too. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, the uh, Extinction um, activists, the Extinction Rebellion uh, people, uh, are being (sighs) harassed by the law in large numbers. A group spokesman said uh, Richard Walton, that um, pre- uh, former Scotland Yard counterterrorism commander, is the very same man that authorised the propaganda report on XR by the opaquely funded free market think tank Policy Exchange, which we now know to be receiving money from some of the UK's leading uh, energy firms. Leading energy firms? No! That's what uh, a group for spokesman for Extinction Rebellion said. The report sought to portray a deeply non-violent and non-ideological movement as extremist in order to justify the introduction of harsher laws on peaceful protest, they said. As um, some members of their uh, ilk were gluing themselves to every available surface. (laughs) Glue. I, I don't think that's... Is that sensible, really? Because if you just get yanked off something you're glued to, doesn't that hurt? Uh, Two flights were grounded and 50 protesters arrested. Scotland Yard's top officer warned that climate change campaigners are taking officers away from tackling crime across the country. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, please. That's the excuse that they don't show up if you're being attacked at this moment. They'll put you on hold. Uh, Dame Cressida Dick is Scotland Yard's top officer. She urged to Extinction Rebellion... Uh, the Extinction... Re- That's very hard to say. You you try saying that. I couldn't. No, he couldn't. See? But if it was their face... Your beautiful face! A British Airways plane heading for Amsterdam was delayed at City Airport after a protester evaded security and clambered up at the fuselage to glue himself on top of the plane for an hour. You imagine how frustrating that would be for all those uh, people inside who want to get to Amsterdam. For whatever reason they're going. Cass says, I think that whenever these Extinction Rebellion protesters glue themselves to stuff, they should just be left there. I bet they wouldn't do it again. Well, they couldn't. Uh, Oldbury, hello, Ranjit. Hello, Nick. How are you? Great, mate. I want to talk about Extinction Rebellion, and I do agree with you, it's very hard to say. Yes. Yep. They should have chosen something that trips off the tongue a bit better. Yeah, you see, car warriors would have been okay. Well, ex- but Extinction Rebellion, that's just very, very hard. <laughs> they didn't think about that at, at all, did they? Well, that just shows the level of the intelligence. You know, these I'm sure they're people. very smart. Maybe they were just overcome by, the f- by glue fumes. I think they probably were. And what does a glue, a glue come packed in and how is it manufactured? Have they ever thought about that? What does it come in? A tube. Yeah, metal tubes, yeah. yeah tube. Which, which, which have to be dug up. Do they? Metal has to be dug up and smelted <laughs> or whatever. You know right. what I mean? And I totally agree with you. If it, well, whoever said, once they're stuck, just leave them there. They won't do it again. Um, you know that bar you was on about where you pay £10 and if you can hang on to it? No. And you get, oh, you know, that. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. You're getting a very narrow memory at the moment. Terrible, yeah. 
terrible. Yeah, it's this when you see London so peaceful with the pink bow people, it's slimy radicals. Anyway, that bar. <clears throat> What would happen if they put some super glue on their hand and went up there? They'd win the hundred pound. They'd probably win a thousand, wouldn't they? Uh, well, I suppose I mean, so. That's probably called you cheating. Just tell right? them, it's like cheating, yeah. Because yeah. my my son, he's a he's a bit of a bodybuilder, and he had a go at one of those bars in mm-hmm. Paynton. And I told him, you ain't gonna win. Yeah, and he wouldn't have it. He no. paid ten pound. What it is, that bar, the circumference of it is too wide for you to get a grip on it. Anyway, it's easy money. And I, and I yeah, I don't think that's it. I think it's that hanging on a bar is something that you don't normally do under. For, for any, even if you go to the gym a lot, you you don't no. ever practice. So you pay ten pound if you can hang on to it. No. And you get a oh that yes, yeah, yes yes yes. You're getting a very narrow memory at the moment. Terrible yeah. Terrible yeah. It's this when you see London so peaceful with the pink bulb people, it's slimy radicals. Anyway, that bar, <clears throat> what would happen if they put some super glue on their hand and went up there, they'd win the hundred pound, they'd probably win a thousand, wouldn't they? Uh, well, I suppose I mean, so. You, That's probably called you, cheating. You tell right? them, it's like cheating, yeah, because yeah. my, my son, he's a, he's a bit of a bodybuilder, and he had a go at one of those bars in mm-hmm. Paynton. And I told him, you ain't going to win, yeah. and he wouldn't have it, he no. paid ten pound. What it is, that bar, the circumference of it, is too wide for you to get a grip on it anyway. It's easy money. And I, and I yeah, think I don't think that's cool. it. I think it's that hanging on a bar is something that you don't normally do under... For, for any, even if you go to the gym a lot, you, you don't no. ever practice just hanging. You, you're you moving. If you're doing chin-ups, then there's... Uh, well, you're not, the, you're not doing chin-ups for two minutes unless you're a superman. Uh, and so I just think it's using a part of your, uh, your arms and your grip that you don't ordinarily use. Unless you're a orangutan, because you might be able to do <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Did you see him a few years ago? They see if your arms are longer than the in proportion to your body, yeah? You're ape positive. You're ape you positive. Oh, ape, oh ape my, oh positive. my God. A listener with material. Oh, no. Oh, I've been sideswiped. You should be ashamed of yourself, Ranjit. Graham Tex, have you seen the stage version of War Horse yet? I saw it in Leicester the other week. To say it was superb is an understatement. It's the best 36 quid I've ever spent. 36 quid to see a horse? Yeah, I did see War Horse. I'm sure it was at the National Theatre. And I, I, I spent the entire time thinking, gosh, that's a good puppet. I can't remember really anything, anything, other about, anything else about it other than it, it was a good puppet. Let's have a uh, rice slip. Hello, Colin. Nick, nice to talk to you. Colin. These activists that are gluing themselves to doors. Yeah. What I do is disconnect the doors, say, here's your door, go away, I charge you for a new one. <laughs> Just take the door off its hinges and leave yeah, it. Yeah, that's yours. Or all the bits of brick or, or wherever they're sticking themselves to. Yeah. Say, that's it, that's yours, off you go. Um, nice day, get that unstuck, I'm charging for repairs. But when that gets around, that you you get to keep whatever you glue yourself to, That's right. then chaos will ensue. Why is that? Well, I'll glue myself to a Rolls Royce. No, you just get the part you glue to, the door. <laughs> right. You get charged for the door. Okay. Not the whole Rolls Royce, no. It's not, it doesn't work like that, Nick. Huh. Well, I thought it did. Well, <laughs> who's who are you to make up the rules? They, they glue themselves to a door, not the building, right. just the door. Okay. What if they glue themselves to the floor? Remove, remove the tiles. <laughs> okay. The area in one metre, that's it, that's yours, that's yours. You glued yourself to that. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Colin. <laughs> He's given it a lot of thought. So um, they tried to shut down London City Airport, uh, but they didn't quite manage that. Uh, but they did cause uh, what is described as chaos. And uh, hours earlier, a protester delayed an Aer Lingus flight to Dublin. Because apparently during the pre-flight safety demonstration, a smartly dressed middle-aged man got up and began roaming the cabin, lecturing passengers on climate change. He said, I don't want to travel, but I don't want, I don't want to get off. <laughs> well, you've got to choose one. He says, I'm sorry, I am uh, I'm very sorry. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. He said, I'm extremely sorry for the inconvenience. And as the plane turned back from the runway, 
to have this person removed, the pilot told passengers he would have to take on more fuel to replace what had been used up during the protest. <laughs> Addressing uh, Extinction Rebellion activists, Sir Dame Cressida Dick, out of the police, said, not that police, the police, said, uh, protest lawfully or go home. You've caused disruption to many people and caused misery to some people's lives. And that's probably true. But you know what? It pales into insignificance to the world-altering changes that will befall us all if they're right about climate change. You know, if the ice melts on Greenland, that's it. It's all over. The sea level will rise six metres. Which means, London, you will now become... A job. Now, a lot of people will hear you say that and think, oh, well, she's just been taught that at school. Do they teach you that <laughs> opinion at school? No, they don't at all. Do they mention we it at all? Not really. Right. Do you think they yeah. should? <laughs> yeah, I think they should. Like, in geography, maybe, because it's important and it's going on right yeah. now. Well, what do they teach you in geography, then, if they don't teach you this? Um, we're, we're learning about world trade. Ugh. Boring. Yeah, I know. It's boring. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, have you been on any of these extent uh, these um, extinction rebellion marches? Um, march, but I kind of missed it right. by like a day. Um, so no, I haven't. But some friends have gone to them. But you, and, you are yeah. you are with them in uh, in thought. Yeah, because yeah. even though they're doing it quite like up front, they're still just people are missing out, like their planes and stuff. But I wouldn't be able to do that if the world was gone. So. Well, if when climate change takes hold and the changes do come, as scientists predict, then ain't nobody going nowhere. Yeah, no holidays. Yeah, you can forget that. You'll have to holiday in Watford, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrific thought. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Ellie. Uh, Glenn in Tipton says, I think that the Extinction Rebellion protesters who superglue themselves to doors should be left on the door and the police should remove the door from the frame and let them walk around all day with the door attached to them. That would teach them. It's remarkable the resistance that people have to this. They're, they're not trying to save the planet. The planet will be just fine. In fact, the planet will get along a lot better without us. It's, it's our way of life that's, uh, that they're trying to save. But that, that part of the message seems to be lost in amongst the din of, uh, you know, banging drums and, uh, f and the furious reaction. People are treating it as though uh, it's the planet they're trying to save. The, the, the planet can do just fine without us. The planet will be OK. Don't you worry about that. It's our position on this planet that's at risk. Uh, Stephen says, if Extinction Rebellion glued a floating Yoda to the top of the plane, would the plane fly without fuel? Use the force, Luke. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. He says, is this the answer to our aeroplane base to carbon woes? Says Sir Stephen. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? Why doesn't anyone listen to him? Buster in Primrose says, I saw the middle of the road, I saw middle of the road performing Chirpy Chirpy Cheep Cheep at a fun fair in Rostock, and it changed my life, he says. What, for the worse? Yeah, I can imagine. Ooh wee, chirpy, chirpy, cheep, cheep. Now I'm going to have that running around my mind. Oh. And so are you, I bet. You're welcome. Thank you. And that's it. If you like this, you might like the whole show, which we strip the ads out and the news out and put the old show...